Well, g'day, tubes. How's she hanging? Pretty good here and stuff. So today we're going to try to get this bucket out of here. It's hardened, I guess, pretty good. I'm going to try to drill it too, but I hope it doesn't fall apart on me. Uh, I'm going to try to just drill it, I guess, with one of my hole saws. I, I don't know. Yeah, this is going to definitely be in there really good. We're going to have to... Uh, get some kind of tools I think to help us get this out now. So we'll just get some channel locks here. Hopefully I can... Uh, oh, looks like she's gonna break. Cheapy plastic. That's alright. Oh, Cheapy plastic. I think this bucket I got here, this, uh, this pail was... Oh, that hurt. This pail was quite old, I think, when I got it. And it sat in the store for like probably 10 years. I don't think it's supposed to break apart quite like that. Well, this might take a little more time than I thought it was going to. Especially if I can't actually. That was a big hunk. Ow, and that hurt too. <laughs> this will burn off too whenever we put the heat to her, of course, but I'd like to get her out so I can kind of see where I want to drill and stuff. But it's not coming apart the way I was wanting it to. It's actually warm down here. That's weird. <laughs> oh, you dirty thing. That cement actually must heat a little bit. Maybe that's why it's that uh, non non curable stuff. Thing. Darn thing. It's like pulling out teeth. Well, maybe not teeth. Oh. That's definitely not what I wanted to happen here. But slowly it's coming out. Probably should have greased her. Oh well. Live and learn, right? Ugh. Ow, that hurts a lot again. I'm gonna put gloves on. Ow! Concrete's very abrasive, apparently. Wow, this is either a really old bucket or some crappy plastic, maybe. I don't know. Oh, look at that one. Broke kind of funny. Ow, oh, that hurt again. I better put another glove on. I just can't, uh, I can't get underneath it then, right? Well, this isn't coming out the way I was wanting it to. Piece by piece. Bit by bit. Ow, I did it again. Why am I using that hand? <laughs> I only got a little bit 
bit left there from the bottom. It wasn't a very good pail, I guess. It wasn't in really good shape, maybe. I don't know. Well, we might just have to cook that out of there. Because I don't know if I can get too much more now. And that pail, I think it had a little ridge in the bottom, so that'll be all nicely stuck in the bottom. Oh, there we got some of the bottom out. Okay, that might come better now. Ah, oh, there we go. Frickin' thing. <sighs> okay, so it's still pretty... pretty damp in the bottom here, so I don't think it's gonna be hopefully too hard to drill it. So I've already got the hole in the bucket. We'll pull this off here. I put tape on the inside of the bucket too, just for some extra support. So, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to drill this with like a metal drilling bit or not here. But I'm going to try. Alright, I don't uh, have a whole lot of high hopes on this actually working here. I, uh, I'm going to drill a little bit bigger hole because I'm really not sure how I want to fire this thing. Uh oh. As of yet. So i got to uh, drill a little bit bigger hole. And it's easier to uh, drill a bigger hole now than try to drill it out later. So. But I am using a <laughs> Milwaukee, one of them hole saw things here, and I, I don't know if it's going to work or not. And I don't really have the depth to get, it's going to fill this little cup up. I wish they were longer, but they're a certain size and that's all you get. So we're going to try to drill it on a little bit of an angle to the bucket too. So uh, it'll give the flame a little around. I don't think I got to go a whole lot though, but there's going to be one corner where it's not going to get through. So I don't know if this is going to work. It's probably not going to drill this. Well, so far so good. The thing is trying to hold the thing. probably don't need the pilot bit in it. So far it's still fairly sharp. I think if I put this thing on hammer too, it would be really bad. I don't think this is going to work. It's not drilling very good now. Okay, I might try with this pilot bit out. Hang on. Oh, this isn't going too good. <laughs> uh, this may not drill this. I really don't want to put it to hammer. Just annihilating the end of this bit, I think. That's uh, sharpening it, that's for sure. <laughs> Not sharpening it. Uh. Holy, that's gonna, that's really getting dull now. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really been bad on this thing and uh, how did they do that then on those videos I watched? I guess it was damper or something, but I would have been afraid of the stuff <laughs> falling in the hole again. That's why I didn't do it when it was damp. Uh, I'm just afraid of the hammering is going to smash this thing apart. I 
like this. I don't like this. That's just gonna, it's already destroyed this bit. And it's just, it's actually warming it up pretty good too. Oh man, I don't know, I might have, should have maybe done this earlier. Boy oh boy, I don't know what to say. Um, hmm. I mean, it's not cured, so it's not like 100% hard yet, but... It's almost sort of going, but this bit's almost flat now. <laughs> it's really wrecking this bit really bad. Uh, Basically sanding it down. Uh, I don't know if I want to try speed two, but... That'll melt her off, that's for sure. working but look at the bit now <laughs> there's like nothing left of the teeth oh my goodness and I got a long way to go yet surprisingly it's still going there's no teeth at all now I needed one and oh look at that that's just destroyed that bit two inch garbage Good for steel, but not concrete, I suppose. Oh. Okay, yes. <laughs> Ever wanted a smooth, smooth hole saw? That's how you get one. Wow. So that's uh, not looking too good. Only uh, I'm only about that far into it here, and I've got uh, yeah quite a bit to go yet. Oh, that's not good. Now, for some reason, it was still sort of drilling there. I really don't understand why, because there's like. No teeth left on it now. <laughs> but I think I'm bottomed out now, so I'm going to have to try to chisel this stuff out of here a bit. I'm going to maybe just get my little gun and just maybe chisel a bit out. I don't know. This probably isn't a good idea. Gotta break the bits out. Just going super light with it. So that stuff actually is pretty fibery. That's pretty cool. And it is breaking apart. I might have to go get another sacrificial two inch hole saw bit. I think I have another one of those. Should get you, get you down a little bit more. Hang on. Got this thing turned like way down. 
they don't want to bust too much out. It's working. Sorta. Of. more than that right now. Oh, I need a little blower gun. Hang on. Alright, I don't know if this uh, hole saw's got much more left in them. Oh, geez. Poor guy. Poor guy. Oh, jeez. Maybe I better slow it down. That gives me more torque, though. <laughs> I won't go the right way, maybe. Probably doesn't matter. Now it's got no teeth. Oh, jeez. Holy. Oh my god, it's grabbing something good in there. Hmm. Oh, I think that's it for this bit. It's freaking kicking my face a bit. Wow, I can't believe <laughs> what happened to it. Well. What else can I do here? I do have some small masonry bits. That might work. Um, crappiest thing I've ever had to drill, I'll tell you that one. I just don't really want to go buy. That was, you know, kind of an expensive bit. I think they're about almost 25 bucks. Which is enough. meant for concrete. That bit. I just don't want to blow out the inside of the thing here. Feel about sunk the bit in so we've got like another half inch to go holy I don't know it's pretty good for not with any teeth on it uh, well I don't know I'm gonna have to work with this I guess for a minute Okay, that, that drill bit's done. <laughs> it's 
definitely done. I'm going out of this natural masonry bit here now. Just going to drill a series of smallish holes. Oh, I'm just about through with that thing too, you know that? I'm really close. over here because I got uh, more material. That's actually probably pretty good. It's uh, quite wet still. Okay, it's not pretty, but you know what? The metal won't care and neither will the flame. Now, flame. No, I didn't do, I didn't do that on a downwards, a downwards inwards, but I don't think it'll make a huge difference. I might have to uh, get something fireproof though to stuff in around the flame thing here, because I'll show you what I'm going to use. So if all goes well, I'm going to hopefully use this heater that was in my uh, travel trailer's water heater thing. It's got a solenoid on it that releases the gas, so when you want to shut her off, just and off she goes. I don't know if it's going to have enough heat though. Uh, it's not a huge area. This does put out kind of a lot of flame. I better not put that straight up because there's Christmas cards above me that might uh, get a little, uh, little bit flamey. So maybe we'll just move his back so you can get a little more idea of the flameage on this. Uh, I don't know what BTU this is. It only uh, it regulates it here actually at a half a PSI it says on it. Maximum pressure so it's not a whole lot coming out. It's not, my, it's not like my half a million BTU Tiger Torch, which is like, whoa, super awesome. 
that would be way too much heat for that thing though. So we'll give her a, a light here. Ooh. Oh, come on. There's not a whole lot of heat volume there, so I'm a little bit uh, wonder if that's going to be enough. But in that enclosed space, and you leave her cooking for a while, it, it might do it. It might do it. I don't know. But uh, I don't know if this tube's going to be enough, though. It might. I don't know. <laughs> it's like I say, I don't know. That's why I drilled kind of a medium-ish, small-ish, not a huge-ish kind of hole in the side of this thing. So let's go uh, maybe fit this somehow and see how it's going to look. So this, I presume, will just kind of get propped there. Well, that might actually work pretty good. I think I might, I don't know, might need a little bit of, or maybe a bit of extra coming in there might be all right. I don't know whether that's a good thing to light this yet. Just give her like a little flamey kind of test thingy. And then thermal shock it, I don't know. We could give her a little test here, I guess. Okay, so just a little flamey test. Just just a small, small, small flamey test. We're not going to leave her burning for like an hour or something. Um, now, fun thing is i got to try to get down there and light it. Yeah, that's not going to work. See, I'm not a smoker, so I don't know how to do these sorts of things. Oh, I think that's going to be enough flame in there. And I can angle this too, right? Around the crucible thing. That's good. Let's just plunk this guy on. Oh uh, yeah, that's going to have to get trimmed down, I guess. That's just not going to work. There's quite a bit of heat coming out there, so sweet. We won't know until we try it, though, right? But yeah, the bucket's gonna need a, a trimming. Uh, some of you, I think, thought that this came out of this bucket. It actually doesn't. It stays in here. You know, it's nice right now because I can oh my god, it's heavy. Pick it up and move it, but this actually doesn't come out of the bucket. It stays in there. Um, but now, as in. That, see, either that or I'm going to have to maybe, well, I don't want to make a new lid. That would suck, but I think if I cut her down to the lip in here, oh, that's nice and warm in there now. I <laughs> cut her down to the lip in here, that would fit on pretty decent, I think. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's that. Well, it's too bad I had to sacrifice that guy, but, uh, you know, if you were really good, you could cut teeth back into this, but, you know, it's actually wore down quite a bit. Uh, let's just do a compare. I think they're all the same depth. So that's uh, wore that off pretty good there. So uh, for all she's worth, we'll just probably buy a new one if I need another two inch. That uh, it's definitely wore her down though. Holy. It's not really sharp though, which is kind of weird. Like sharp that way you think it would be like razor sharp, but it's not. Alrighty, in the mail today I received a package um, from who I don't know. Um, but it does say please do not bend or fold. I don't think it would, that's a pretty stiff package. So let's crack her open and see what she be. Looks like a letter attached to her here. It says, Bill, totally enjoy your videos. You make me laugh. You make me yell, oh no. <laughs> I don't mean to, it just happens. Uh, I'm sure sometimes you can hear me from here. Um, I saw these online and I uh, saw these online. Uh, just knew I had to, <laughs> had to get them to you. Really? Uh, maybe you can show them and use them in an intro um, to decide to a dedicated video. Sorry, do a dedicated video on number 29. Oh yeah, so you guys really want to know what's all about this number 29. Well, one day. <laughs> um, you could title it 292929. 29, 29. 
so people can easily find it and then and can stop asking its meaning. Again, good job, keep them coming, Gary. So from Gary, from I don't know where, it doesn't say. So he's got a little cardboardy packagey thingy guy here. Um, let's see, I guess I could just probably cut these things if, I, if a person had a knife or a punch. So he ordered these online and he just had to get them to me. So I'm curious to what these are. <laughs> really? It's two plates. Two plates from Illinois. CP2929. That's hilarious. Wow, these are old plates too. No, I'm just kidding. 1976. Actually, they are probably really old plates. Holy cow, they're in really good shape too. That is insane. CP2929. I wonder if I could use those in my truck. That'd be hilarious. So, there isn't really there isn't really much of a story behind this 29 number. Basically, my stepdad drove a truck, big transport truck, and it was number 29. Well, he worked there for many, many, many years, and this truck was an old white international something or whatever it was. Um, it was a good truck. It only had, I think, six six speeds, so it was, you know, kind of a gutless, wandery thing, but uh, it was a good truck. And um, I think it had, you know, transmission rebuilds like 1,500 times. It had, you know, not that many, like maybe five or six the times he the time he was there. And maybe an engine or two rebuilt. That's, you know, really about it. It was a good truck, you know, other than that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so he drove it for many years, and basically the company went belly up. They uh, screwed the company, the owner screwed the company out of money and stuff, so it just kind of went belly up. And then uh, the number after that since has been haunting us. So that's kind of really, really all it is. Um, nothing super major, but now you guys are all cursed for watching this. Everywhere you look, you're going to see this number 29. I guarantee it. So if you want to know some interesting facts about the number 29, uh, that one I know off the top of my head is that Edmund Fitzgerald ship that sank. It was an iron boat that, well, carried iron ore that sank. 29 people died on that. Uh, I just looked up a couple of random things here. I could probably think of lots, but right now I'm just like, no, I can't think of anything <laughs> where this 29 has happened. Um, you've seen it a lot through my videos. It happens all the freaking time. It's like, really? If you look at the time or something, it's... 229 or whatever you know it's like really it's just stupid things really right but it's it's amazing how much it comes up but there's a I'm just looking up a page here the human skull is made up of 29 bones okay <laughs> uh, there's just a bunch of junk here uh, oh April 29th is International Dance Day stupid things um, but there's a lot of different things that I've come across with this number 29. It's like, some of them are really stupid, and you're like, really? Why did that have to be number 29? It could have been, easily could have been 30. No, no, it could have been easily 28 too, but no, no, it's 29. Um, I just can't think of anything right off the top of my head right now, but I see it a lot too in like serial numbers of stuff, we'll say. You know, like if you look on the barcodes, this one doesn't have one, but a lot of times it'll be blah, 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 2-9. It's like, really? Okay. Um, like this one here, for instance. This is a stupid one. This uh, shoe goo. I got it taped up right now because it uh, keeps falling apart. But shoe goo. That tube in there is 29.5 milliliters. Seriously? You can't get 30 mils in there. Are you kidding me? It's 29 and a half. Figures. Things like that, right? It's like, are you kidding me? You couldn't get a little bit more into there and make it 30 mils? It's not that much. Urgh. Just stupid things, you know, and that's kind of where it's haunted us ever, haunted me ever since, you know. Um, I don't kind of for say I got anything else here with the 29 on it, but uh, it just seems to show up and pop up everywhere, and it's kind of, kind of weird. Um, yeah weird stuff. Another good one for the 29 is when I was building that uh, Mini X trailer and it was 29. The way it worked out 
with the height that the three-point hitch lifted and the distance of the trailer and where I had the tires and stuff and everything mounted, everything worked out to 29. It was freaking weird. <laughs> I think it was 29 inches off the ground as well. It was 29 inches away and there's another 29 inch number. The disc, I can't remember it all now, but it's on the, one of the trailer build videos or the mini X trailer build videos. I was, I was I'm still like, really everything come out at 29. There's other numbers you can use. Anyways, that's about it for today. There's been really, 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 really weird things happening today. And I think it's just because of the wind. It, it has, well, it's not now, of course. It's been really windy outside twice today. This wood has fallen off the top here. I think it's probably because it's coming in behind and it's just kind of moving the boards or whatever. Ugh. Ugh. But it's not windy now. <laughs> Really so much, it's pushed off now. Are these trees here? Holy freaking crap, they were like bending like crazy. I'll have to back up the camera footage there on the uh, on little cam there and see if I can uh, maybe show you that. We'll do a, like a faster times on that. I'll just turn it up. We turn it back to like 10 o'clock from this morning and then and we'll go super fast. So, oh, I see the tree guys back there. See their arm still trimming. They cleaned up the branches behind the garage this morning though, so that's good. Woo. So that's good. Anyways, let's go see if we can find that footage of the wind today. Holy crap. It was like 80, 85 kilometer an hour winds today. Gusts. It was wicked. Uh, it's not really shooting the tops of the trees, but you can kind of see the, the shadows down here. How much they're moving. <laughs> I don't know how trees don't just snap right off. I guess they do eventually when they get to a certain... So, oh, that's a bit too fast. You can see when the sun comes out, though, and the movement and stuff. Oh, there we are. Stepdad came for a visit. And then we're like, have you eaten lunch? And he's like, no, well, I haven't eaten lunch either, so let's go have lunch. So we off here eventually went for lunch e eventually well, I didn't think we talked here that long oh, yeah, there I am. okay let's go for lunch <laughs> gone <laughs> but yeah you can really see the, the windiness holy crap there's eight times there was uh, a lot of stuff blowing across the road, the old leaves and stuff getting blown out of the bush. Go back to 64 here. But uh, anyways. Oh. No, it doesn't want to change. But anyways, it was quite windy and blustery. There we go. Today, you can see the sun come and go cloud goes over and sun comes back out and then uh, we'll get up to the end here and it'll be like calm again so oh someone stopped there and did something to their car well, that's amazing what the camera picks up hey <laughs> yep 140 it's getting pretty look at you can see the trees up here moving though holy crap sort of see them. Oh, there you just dropped me off. But uh, anyways, if we go up here, oh yeah, it's still moving a bit. It's still, still quite a bit of gusts. Oh, and that's it. So, get out here, so here, yeah, they're still sort of moving, but I think it must be calming down a little bit now. That's good. Anyways, we'll let this sit a couple of weeks or months or years here before we try it. It's actually hardened up and looks harder now than it did this morning even. It's drying up. Once I get that pail out, it should start drying up fairly good. Got a couple air bubbles though. Well, that's not maybe so too good, but uh, anyways, it's overall not too bad. There's a big hole there too. No, that's supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, should work. I think that should be enough heat there out of that thing. I don't know. We'll have to try her and see, I guess. If not, we'll have to figure something else. 
But got to work on a crucible now. I wouldn't mind kind of something like this sort of stuff. But like thick like that, but of course a lot smaller. I don't exactly know what size the bottom of this. Pretty pretty darn close to whatever that is, I guess. It looks like there's a little bit of gap on about a quarter inch gap around it. So whatever this is the bottom, that would work pretty good. Mm. It's really three and five eighths, but uh, I don't really know if Three and five eighths, three and a quarter probably probably wouldn't fit. Um, yeah, it's too big. I'd like to get an exact measurement down there, but three and three, they're probably not gonna have a pipe that size. It'll be, you know, three, three and a half, and then four. I kind of doubt they'll go into the in-between numbers, so. Ooh. We might have to find something specifically specific like that, or I don't really think it's a good idea to use a square object in there for crucible because the heat wouldn't kind of distribute right in it, I don't think. What have I got that is like, what did I say? Three and, I like to get something that's three and three quarters, see if it fits in there. Hmm, that might be the next challenge. Anyways, whoa, I can uh, figure that out later. I'll try to find something that's in around that size. One guy used the bottom of a fire extinguisher, but I think all my fire extinguishers are aluminum. Magnet doesn't stick to it, right? So, uh, I want it kind of thick too, eh? So it kind of holds that heat a lot. Hmm, what have I got that's three and five eighths? Really, that's pretty, pretty, pretty weird diameter. <laughs> I don't think I've got uh, anything. Nothing in there. I don't think I've got anything like that. So I'm gonna have to do some looking around for for something that size. I guess that's you know quarter inch thick at least too. Because I, I don't want thinny thin kind of stuff. I want something fairly beefy and I just don't think I've got anything like that. I'll have to go up and talk to my metal guys I guess and see what we can get. That's sort of thickish too. <laughs> I mean I don't mind I can weld together some kind of crucible. That's no problem. But to actually have a piece the right size, the right diameter and the same thickness I want that's gonna be the hard part. So just looking around, see what I can see that would work. And I don't see much. <laughs> That's that size. Uh, let's just check in the, in the back here again. I don't have anything out this side anymore, I don't think. Uh, see, I've got this stuff. It's a little bit thinny walled, and it's three inch right on. Uh, that's plastic. That wouldn't work. <laughs> uh, I just want this stuff in like three and a whatever, you know, but all my stuff's a lot smaller, so it's not going to work. Like it's not the right thick. I'll, I'll just have to go talk to those guys, see what they can come up with, see what we can get that's close. I just really kind of hope I don't have to uh, somehow hollow the bottom of this out more to, uh, you know, because it's going to be super duper thick at the bottom here compared to the top because of the, the flare, right? So, but should be should be good. Looks like it didn't cast too bad down there. Seem to hold except where I drill through and I, I might have to fix that try to chisel that off or something but yes 
we'll see what we can come up with. All right, I found our little crucible. I just want to make a circle-y thing here for the size of it and see how it fits in our, our uh, foundry thing here. Um, it's 100 millimeters wide. So I just got my little circle drawn Dewey here and uh, basically what I need to do because uh, this will do half and half you know when you draw the circle it'll be a full so I have to do this to 50 millimeters to the pencil roughly it's a little bit off there just try to close her up a little bit This isn't super wicked accurate, but uh, just to give me really just to give me a little idea. These things are so sensitive. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so that should I haven't used one of these since like grade six. Okay, so this should hopefully give us a. Uh, This should give us a hundred millimeter circle. It's not too bad. It's way better than I could draw, that's for sure. So I'm just gonna clip this out of here and then just see how it fits in the bottom of the foundry. It's awful close but it might be a little bit too uh, a little bit too big. Oh, I guess I should check that and see if that's 100 mil too, shouldn't I? Let's see, from this side that's pretty darn close. I don't know if you can see that but there's what I got. Say that's pretty darn close. So we'll cut that out and then uh, just gonna plunk this in. It might be just a hair bit too big. This this uh, uh, now. Sorry for you uh, for you guys down in the states or that use the SAE. 100 millimeters is. Ah crap. So uh, 3.9 inches, so probably four inch. But anyway, okay. So I think that I think that might be a little bit too big, but I could. There's only like one little spot at the bottom that I would have to like hollow it out a little bit. And how I would hollow it out, I have no idea. I just have to shave shave it a little square on the bottom, but I don't know. I don't know how I would do that. Awful dusty. Okay, so there's our thing. Let's go over and see if that'll fit in the bottom or not. Okay, so pretend that's a crucible. Oh, that's freaking really close. That actually might work, you know. that I don't think I can get that out of there now too easily though. <laughs> that's alright. That might work. Might just work and I won't have to hollow too much out. So that's it there. It's 100 mil or 3.93. That's actually, actually, you know, I think that's going to be really good by the same diameter. So it's the same high as it is wide. And it's a uh, uh, purity graphite crucible cup furnace torch melting silver copper. Free shipping, but it's from China. And generally they're not too fast. So uh, let's see if there's any more specs. Can melt up to. 20 net weight, I guess, is maybe that's the weight of the thing. I don't know. 20, 20.79 ounces. I might just order that, you know. The inside's smaller. Now, my question is if I do pop cans, I need it to kind of. I don't think a pop can's that size. What the heck's the size of a normal pop can? Oh, that's perfect. So the U.S. standard can is 4.83 inches high and 2.13 inches in diameter. So that's that's good. That should 
fit in there. So if I happen to want to do cans, I can just should be good. Um, so I don't think there's really anything else here, and it's square. That's good. It doesn't don't have the bowy shape to it. No open flames. Uh oh. Oh, this might not work then. No open. Be sure to use the intermediate frequency furnace to heat it. High purity graphics so it's have a good thermal stability and small thermal expansion. This product works great with furnaces. Fit for holding up metal during melting. So it says no open flames. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> open flames. I wonder why though. Is, does it crack it or something? Maybe the shock? I guess if an actual melting electric furnace heats up slowly and then and then you know it's hot, right? Where this is like really hot really fast and it's maybe not good on it. Ah oh, man, warning, do no open flames. Be sure to use the intermediate frequency furnace to heat. Well, that just put the kibosh in me. Ah, really? So we might be back to, yeah. Darn it. Well, that's not gonna work, I guess. If they say right on there, no open flames. Well, that's not gonna work. Uh, it's funny because I found another one there that was a little bit smaller. No, it was bigger, sorry. It was four and a quarter inch. And it said propane torch. So, I don't know. I think I'm just going to go up to my metal guys and we'll get a four inch piece of pipe stuff. And uh, I'm pretty sure I can collaborate some stuff to make the bottom and I'll weld the bottom onto it. And maybe some kind of grabber handly thingy stuff on the top and uh, away we go. So maybe I'll get a little chunk of length of that stuff and then uh, I can make a couple of them too, right? In case I want to do something else. Lead? Probably not. Uh, copper? I don't know if it's going to melt copper. That might not be hot enough for that. Um, brass maybe? If I ever have any brass? It's mostly going to be aluminum though. That's the only really stuff I've got around here. Um, other than that, I don't think it's going to get hot enough to melt too much more, so you have to get up pretty hot for, for brass even and stuff, and uh, copper's really hot, so that'd be cool to be able to melt copper, but uh, I, don't, I don't think that flame's going to do it. It's not going to be hot enough, so I need more flame, and this kind of just, it's not very much, you know, so I might have to change my flaming operation too. I don't know, but anyways, that's it for today. Going to rock on, head her out. Uh, I don't really have anything going on tomorrow. As in video wise, so I don't know uh, what we're gonna do, but it's supposed to get really cold again, figures. And uh, kind of something's pushing it all, this wind and crap, I guess, from today. So that kind of sucks. But uh, anyways, I don't know, maybe tomorrow will be a day off. Don't know. If my wife's not doing anything, maybe we'll go do something or something. I don't know, we'll see. She's so busy with her stuff, though. So it's hard to get her away for a, an afternoon even sometimes, you know, but uh, we'll see. So, anyways. Ooh, it's mushy here still. It's very windy, so I'm gonna call her a day. We'll catch you later. Holy crap. Have a good night and stuff. Thanks for watching. And uh, holy crap, the wind. Doesn't look too bad, but it sounds a lot worse than it actually is. It sounds really bad. Oh, look at the woodpecker's been working here. Drilling more huge holes in the trees, little turds. That's a big pleated woodpecker. I seen him here the other day, too. That's what he was doing, I guess. But anyways, calm in the storm. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you maybe tomorrow, or I don't know, whenever we do. But we'll catch you. Oh, and Gary, thanks for sending out those... Um, License plates. That's crazy. <laughs> Have a good day. Catch ya. Catch you later.